Hello everyone, my name is The Fox. In this video, it'll be a follow-up video on my experiment of seeing if I can burn in the display on the Steam Deck OLED. It's been a bit over 750 hours right now. I was going to wait until about a thousand hours, but I decided to check on it and uh, it's already burned in. So uh, it's not super burned in, but it is decidedly burned in far more on the HDR side, which is to be expected, honestly. I was expecting HDR Blue to be the worst of the bunch. HDR 1000 really is the worst uh, image retention issues that we have. While we do actually see some of these SDR content being showing some type of image retention issues. As we get lower and lower, obviously it's less and less. So SDR 90 nits is the least noticeable image retention issues that we have, whereas SDR 400 is quite noticeable. However, when we take a look at just flat colors, we can't actually see any image retention on the SDR side at all, really. We can only see it uh, basically the inverse of color. So if we use a blue uh, color, obviously green and, uh, gr green and red don't show up, but blue shows up because there's less um, emissiveness from those subpixels. So you can see a clean outline likewise for green and red. And we also see that on white or gray, because the blue, green, and red have lost their impact there, how, how hard they can be emitting on those subpixels, we actually see the lesser of that pixel there. So we have a tinge of color problem, meaning, uh, so if blue is here, we're going to see on the gray side, we're going to see it almost be kind of yellowish, uh, because there's more red and green. So that's pretty interesting to see. Now, before we get too far into this video, I wanted to just quickly talk about a few things. My previous video, I'm going to link to it at the end of this video, it will be uh, kind of going over how I created the application itself and going over uh, how much power the HDR panel takes when you're doing all HDR versus SDR. Basically, it's around 2 watts for SDR content and around 5 watts for HDR content. Uh, that's maximum per pixel, right? So that's the basically 2.5 times more power to drive full HDR on this panel at max brightness. Also, because there is a digital gain that happens after the 70 point, 75 point mark on the brightness, all of my testing was done at 75 points of brightness so that we're not engaging any of that digital gain whatsoever. For anyone takes these results and runs away with it thinking every OLED deck is going to have some type of burn-in problem immediately, you really have to understand that my particular game, the application that I've made to stress test the panel, is a worst case scenario. I am pushing full brightness. I'm doing HDR at full brightness. I have SDR elements that are there and they aren't as pronounced as the HDR uh, stuff that I'm pushing, which is to be expected. However, my application was designed to damage the screen as much as possible and I did a good job. I, I damaged my screen. So uh, before you go, go crazy, there are some things that we can talk about to try to lessen any of these things. And we'll talk about that at the end, at the end of this video. However, let's go into some of the examples showing you the image retention issues that I've already shown. Okay, so let's briefly go over what's going on with this particular test that I've been doing. This application that I've made has been specifically designed to brutalize the OLED panel on my Steam Deck OLED. I'm going to go ahead and bring this up over here, and if we look, you can actually see the ghosting from the letters underneath here. Now, what's interesting is because this is green, blue, and red, uh, it looks kind of off based on my camera, if I go ahead and change this a little bit, it becomes easier to see that it's, you know, green, blue, and red, but I have to change the exposure on my camera. I'll go ahead and change that back to normal. So what you're looking at is basically this is just being overexposed on my camera. That's why it looks kind of weird. So the other part that we have to mention here is that the brightness goes from zero to a hundred. However, going from zero to 75 is technically the max brightness for the panel in HDR and going over 75 is just a digital gain applied to the image. So we're not actually making the panel any brighter when we go over 75. So having it 75 is the max brightness. So that's pretty much what's going on here in this experiment. I have static elements that are all doing a bunch of different things, all at different types of brightness that I am signifying to the display what to run at. And this is covered in my previous video as well, but effectively we have uh, 90 nits, 190 nits, and 400 nits, and then all of these are at max for green, blue, red, and then HDR 1000 is white. So it would be all three subpixels uh, displaying there. What's interesting is as we start looking at this, the green, blue, and red, uh, because we are maxing out those specific subpixels, when we are taking a look at the image retention issue, you're going to see the green not be illuminated as much. So the blue and red will be 
peaking on this and green and red will be peaking, peaking on this and a blue and green will be peaking on this. So you're going to see these colors of the outline of these letters tinged based on the less luminance from these particular emissive pixels. So let's go ahead and show you what it looks like. You can also see it right here. So you see 90 nits, 190 nits, and 400 nits. And you can see as they're going up, it gets you know worse and worse as we go down. So even at our minimum brightness here, the SDR 90 nits, that is still does have image retention on this particular display. Now, I haven't gone ahead and restarted this machine, so I haven't shut it down. We haven't taken a look at if we can try to make this any better. But you can clearly see SDR 400 nits right there, uh, SDR 190 nits, uh, SDR... 90 nits right there. Here I am increasing the exposure so it's easier to see what's going on here and you can see HDR green, HDR red, and like I said the blue and green are going to be more pronounced here and you can actually see that the color shift because of the emissive pixels that I have. Let me see if I can mess with this a little so you can see it a little bit better. So at where we are right now we do have uh, burn-in. This is effectively image retention. Now, I hesitate to say burn-in because uh, we don't know if this actually burned in the panel when the display is off, so we'll take a look at that in a second. I just want to verify the uptime on this machine. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to try to shut down this device and see if there is any actual burn-in of the panel itself, which I don't think that we're actually going to see. We're probably just going to see image retention issues. Burn-in would be if it was this panel is off and we still see those burned in pixels. So we'll take a look at that in a second. All right, so the Steam Deck OLED is now fully powered off and the panel has no burned in pixels whatsoever. So we are just looking at image retention issues here. So I'll go ahead and power it on and see if just powering off and powering back on helps fix any of the image retention issues that we've seen. I'm also going to try to look up some just like flat colors so we can get a better idea of how bad the uh, image retention issues are at around 750 hours so far and then we're going to see if we can try to fix that so we'll see what happens sdr 400 there uh and sdr 90 we can kind of see it but not nearly as pronounced as sdr 400 uh the sdr 90 is a slight ghosting right here i've also boosted my exposure rate a bunch just so you can clearly see this on the desktop and also i'm just trying to see if you can clearly see like HDR red obviously is less red in there. So we have more blue and green showing through in this because those are unused pixels of effectively, the unused subpixels in that particular grid. And then we have HDR 1000 here, which is just a nice ghost image right there in the background. And we'll see how this looks when we're playing games and stuff as well. But I wanted to bring up some desktop apps and see if we can't try to fix this. All right, so here we have an all blue screen. We'll see if we can't change this a bit. So if I go ahead and change my exposure rating, it becomes hard to see, so I don't have to boost this a bit. So things might be overexposed here, but it's just so that you can clearly see what's going on. So again, because HDR blue is showing up on this blue type of display that we have here, because the blue that I've been using as a subpixel has less... It's been used so much that it is now less effective that we can actually see this. And HDR 1000, likewise, also also there because it's using every subpixel. So these are the three that we see. And for everything else, we don't really see all that much. Yeah. And likewise, we don't see anything for red or green. Red being down here and green up here because we're showing blue background. So only the blue one is visible as well as the HDR 1000. But we already do have at around 750 hours, at least on HDR st content that I've been pushing, that is where we see clear burn-in. Let me go ahead and boost this up again. And we don't really see the SDR stuff. We get do it a little bit on 400 nits. It's right there, but it's very, very faint. Whereas the higher HDR stuff that we have here is far more pronounced. So HDR uh, content, if you're constantly pushing it, it's a very static image. Obviously, we are going to have a problem. So let's go ahead and take a look at green and red as well. All right, so <laughs> this is going to look really orange for you guys right now. Let me go ahead and change my exposure rating. Okay, just so you can see, if I go all the way down, you can see that this is clearly red. However, when I boost my exposure, obviously the color is going to change. But once again, you can see we have image retention on HDR red as well as HDR 1000. And for SDR 400, I really don't see anything here. It's kind of faint. You actually need like grays to actually have that show up. But 
HDR content is indeed uh, more prone to image retention, especially after a long amount of time, which is what we anticipated to be happening. Let's go ahead and take a look at green. And here we are for HDR green. I'm gonna go ahead and change the exposure just so you can see it's clearly green. And we're gonna go and just tweak the exposure just so it's easier for you guys to see. It's kind of hard to see, how do I actually convey this? You can see it, it's far more, it's, you know, it's not very pronounced even in real life. Um, you can see it, it's right there, but the green subpixels seem to be far less impacted by image retention issues. So even at HDR full brightness, we see no SDR whatsoever. So the green subpixels look to be the most resilient to image retention. It's just the blue that shows up prominently, which we definitely knew was going to be the case. But even red is kind of interesting as well. But green seems to be far more resilient for image retention. Obviously, this is going to get worse as I continue to do my experiment. But that's what we see red, green, and blue. I'm going to bring up a gray screen just so we can see it. All right, so here is the gray screen. I'm gonna go ahead and just lower the exposure just so you can see. Even when we lower the exposure all the way, you can actually see HDR 1000 pretty clearly right there. It's kind of clear as day. So this would be all subpixels active at maximum brightness on the panel. If I go ahead and boost the exposure a bit just so we can see things a little bit clearer here. Likewise, again, what we're seeing here, let me focus in on this. If the panel wouldn't turn off. So for HDR red, you can see because these red subpixels have been used so much that they are less performant. And because they're less performant, we have more blue and green subpixels being far more responsive in this same zone. So you get this kind of bluish color that is happening in this image retention issue. Likewise, for HDR green, what we see here, green has been overused a bit, so you kind of have a bit of a reddish color here. And then HDR blue, which is a little hard to see, it actually looks yellow. So you would have, uh, what is that, red and green together. Yeah, so this is what the image retention issues look like so far at around 750 hours. Let's take a look and see how impactful this is when playing a game. Okay, so it is super faint. It is really hard to actually see on the panel itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring it up right here. You may be able to see the R right there, so it's HDR. Let's see if I can well, first, let's see if I can change the exposure rating on my camera to highlight it. So you can see HDR right there. So you can see HDR 1000. It is there, but it's not super pronounced. The other stuff, you can see HDR kind of slightly. And for the SDR, you can kind of see SDR right here but I have to blow this out just to make it more visible on the camera. When I go down to, you know, when I bring it down, it doesn't become as visible on this panel. In real life, it's actually hard to see. I wanna see if I can match it up. You know what, with the exposure rating that I have here, my exposure on the camera is a bit low. You can actually tell by how dark the surrounding scene is. But how I, how you're looking at this right now, through my viewfinder, is how this actually looks like in real life. I can notice, the HDR, you can kind of see it as I move around, right? You can see, take a look right here, keep your eyes peeled right there as I move around, and you can see the HDR image retention. That's the HDR 1000 part, but for the SDR stuff, I don't really see it as much. I don't really see it at all, to be honest. But yeah, HDR 1000 is uh, pretty clear as day to see so at 750 hours, pushing HDR content does appear to cause image retention issues on the Steam Deck OLED insofar as using it on the Samsung panel. Now let's talk about some things that you can do yourself to try to minimize any types of problems with an OLED panel. Because Gamescope is not doing any type of pixel shifting or trying to reduce brightness, it's just kind of giving you that raw OLED goodness. What is happening here is that you can take it upon yourself to be mindful of the type of content that you're playing. If you're playing a variety of content all the time, I really wouldn't worry about image retention issues all that much myself. However, if you find yourself playing one game and that one game has static HUD elements that are constantly there, I would suggest not going at maximum brightness all the time. 
I would try to limit the amount of brightness that you have on the panel as one mitigation technique if you're going to be putting hundreds and hundreds of hours into the same game that's going to have constant sitting HUD elements that might cause a problem over time that you're playing that. The other thing that you could do is that whenever you're downloading uh, any of your game because the screen needs to be on, I would minimize the brightness on the screen while you have a bunch of downloads going. Whenever you're downloading games to the Steam Deck, the Steam Deck OLED is just to lower the brightness all the way as another mitigating technique to prevent image retention issues. I'm going to continue running my experiments to see how bad it gets at 1500 hours, likewise at 3000 hours to see where we are with how much damage we can do on this panel. I'm going to try to see if I can get a BOE panel. Again, this is the Samsung panel that I have. So I can test on the BOE panel to see if there's any differences between the panels and how they have image retention issues. So we can get a little bit more con concrete information. Although I think that might make people, uh, if there is a difference, I don't think that's going to be very healthy for people to know that. I still think it's worthwhile data to try to figure out, but I want to thank my Patreon members as well as my YouTube channel subscribers for supporting me. You guys really are awesome. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. I hope this video is informative. I'll have further videos on other image retention issues as we start doing this experiment longer. Thank you for your time, and thanks for watching.